<laughs> yes, you know, we took the summer, children's church did not happen in the summer, and today it resumes. So I forgot. <laughs> That's my mistake for this week, okay? So, children's church leaders, please come forward. Jenny and Nina, I am sorry. Thank you. All right, and any children who are coming to Children's Church today, now is the time. Come forward. Come on. Come on along. And very good. Okay, come along. <laughs> very good. Okay. Grace and peace in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, bless our children's church today and all those taking part in it. Don't worry, we'll bring them back. A number of years ago, Teresa and I were out of town for a wedding. Um, I was gone for the weekend, so we went to, uh, went to church on Sunday. And uh, the church that we went to was in the middle of a worship series on the commandment, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Remember that, Chico? And they entitled the series, The Forgotten Commandment. Yeah, the Sabbath. And I remember the focus was on how we are not valuing rest and getting enough rest as the commandment points to. Instead, we work too much, we sleep too little, and we've made an idol out of work and busyness and productivity. See, I remember that because I felt convicted. Yes. Especially the part of Sabbath that is about rest and getting adequate rest. If Sabbath, as we're going to talk about, is rest and it's also honoring God and worship in other ways. I got that part, I think. But the rest part, hmm. And, and I remember thinking, you know, I, I, I need to make some changes. And I think I did for about a week or two. This is not actually a fun topic for me to talk about because it is an area of personal weakness. I need to hear another sermon on keeping the Sabbath, not deliver one. You know, in, in my, my preaching, as, as you've heard, I, I, I make it a point to, to point out how the Christian worldview is sometimes at odds with the, the culture around us, and we need to distinguish it and make sure we're living as Christ has called. Well, this is an area where I have just swept along with the culture. And what do I mean by that? Devaluing rest. Our American culture has made an idol out of busyness and work and productivity. Work is good. Overwork is not. It makes us feel important and valued. Look how busy I am. It's like we're justifying our lives and justifying our importance by how worn out we are. Now, let, me, let, me, let me show you how deep this runs. See, on the one hand, I can say that this is hard to talk about uh, for me because I have a problem with, with overworking and not resting enough. But on the other hand... The ego within me, in league with my sinful nature, is saying, hey, by saying that to you, I can say, see what a good pastor I am? See how hard I'm working for you? Aren't you glad I'm so dedicated? Isn't that a little weird? It's because my fallen nature wants to worship at that altar of busyness and productivity, just going along with this is our American way. And because our culture does not value rest the way it values overwork productivity, it's actually an easy thing to admit. I can't stand here and say, you know, I really got a problem with that adultery commandment. I keep slipping up on that murder commandment. 
But this one, it's safe in a way. So we fill up our schedules, our days and our weeks. It's what we talk about, how busy we are, how tired we are. I mean, if, if, you, if you asked me what I did yesterday, now this is not true, but if I, my answer was, was I, didn't, I didn't do anything, I just sat around and relaxed all day. I risk being labeled lazy. Yep. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about what God says about Sabbath and rest and what it means why he dedicated a whole commandment to this, along with murder and adultery and stealing. It's right up there with them. Let's talk about what it means to us today, but please note that while I do so, I'm not just preaching to you, I'm preaching to me. Well, Sabbath. Isn't it really, on the one hand, amazing that God did this, that God created a Sabbath? That as, as it's depicted in Genesis 1 and 2, that at the end of the six days of creation, God designated this is a day of rest. I mean, was God tired? Was he worn out? Why did he, why did he do this? What's it for? Well, Jesus gives us an answer. Mark 2, 27 Jesus said, it says this, Then he said to them, The Sabbath was for man, not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath wasn't for God. He didn't do this for himself. He wasn't tired. The Sabbath was for us. And you might say it's one of his early gifts to Adam and Eve. If you read Genesis 1 and 2 and how it's depicted there, their first full day was a Sabbath, a day of rest, not a day of work. So why did God do this? Why did he create a seventh day Sabbath. I believe it's to show how important it is and what it means, how important it is, and as we're going to see, how eternally important it really is. Now, the Bible has a whole lot more to say about Sabbath. It's a big theme throughout the Bible. The Old Testament law fleshes it out, what it means, puts it in as one of the, you know, one of the commandments and, and specifies ways to do it and, and how, how uh, the, the, the bad consequences in the Old Testament law for breaking the Sabbath. And then at the time of Jesus, we've got the Pharisees, as we heard in our gospel today, who took it to a whole legalistic level beyond anything in the scriptures, and how that became the major contention point, one of the major contention points between Jesus and the Pharisees, and was one of the reasons they wanted to put him to death. But really what that's about, as we heard Jesus talking to them in our gospel today, is they didn't really understand what Sabbath was supposed to really be all about. Do we? Do I? Well, that leads us to the letter to the Hebrews. And uh, as we continue our series, Jesus is Better, I could have called today's message A Better Sabbath. These 11 verses that Christy just read from, from Hebrews 4 are just so full of rich theology about the meaning of Sabbath, what it is all about. He's given us the big picture of what it is, and we're going to unpack it. Uh, I'll tell you as briefly as I can. This could be hours. It is, there's so much stuff here. But first, you take, you've got to take a step back to our context. Where are we in the flow of, of, of Hebrews? Last week, the writer was pointing out, was talking about the unfaithfulness of the Israelites in the wilderness. Quoting Psalm 95, how they, they hardened their hearts through unbelief and disobedience. And because of that, that generation did not enter the promised land. The next generation did. That generation died in the wilderness because of their unbelief and disobedience. Now, but notice last week, last week, you know, I'm going to point out uh, how that passage we looked at last week, which was in, in Hebrews 3, how it ended and the way the writer started referring to entering the promised land. I'm going to read from Hebrews 3, 18 and 19. And to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest? 
if not to those who disobeyed. So we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. They didn't enter God's rest, God's Sabbath. Now, what is that? Is that, is that what, is, what did that mean to enter the rest? Does it mean getting to the promised land? Or did it mean that plus something more? And are we keeping the Sabbath? Are we entering God's rest? Okay, that leads us to, to Hebrews 4. And I'm going to read the first five verses again and then unpack them as we go and then say a few words about them. Therefore, he says, since the promise of entering his rest still stands. Okay, it's not just the promised land, it's ahead. The promise of entering his rest still stands. Let us be careful that none of you, the people he's writing to, be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the good news, that means gospel, proclaimed to us, just as they did, but the message they heard was of no value to them because they did not share the faith of those who believe. Faith that's expressed itself in obedience. Now we who have believed enter that rest. Did you catch that? We who believe enter that rest. Just as God has said, so I declared on my oath, they shall never enter my rest. Now he's wondering, okay, now how do we tie all this Sabbath stuff together? Yet his works have been fulfilled since the creation of the world, like Sabbath was way back at the creation. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. On the seventh day, God rested from all of his works. And again, in this passage, he says, they shall never enter my rest. But that's in the past. What's, what's going on? So you see, where he's leading us to is understanding rest and Sabbath rest in a very broad sense. It's much more than just physically resting on the seventh day. It's much more than entering into the promised land with Joshua and, and resting from the wanderings. It's much more than God taking a day off after creating everything. The point is, all three of those, the seventh day rest, entering the promised land rest, God's rest, they're all pictures, they're all previews, they're all signposts, they're all maps pointing to the rest that he's really focused on, the rest we enter by faith. And what is that? What is that? Sabbath rest is a picture of salvation of the right relationship with God. And it's a good picture, a picture of using a picture of resting as a picture of salvation. Our salvation is not a product of our work, our busyness, our filling our lives with busy, righteous things even. But rather, it is resting in what God has done, His work. Sabbath rest is a picture of being saved by grace. We stop working and merely receive because we're resting. And we enter it, as the writer has pointed out several times, you heard in this, in this passage, we enter that through faith, trusting, believing. The problem with the Israelites, he says, is that they didn't have faith. Whereas those who enter the rest today have faith. So, Sabbath rest is a picture of being saved by grace through faith. Sabbath rest. Let's go on then. Therefore, verses 6 and 7. Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience. Now, disobedience is the outward sign of unbelief here. God again set a certain day, calling it today. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted, this is Psalm 95. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Now, the writer's concern, the writer of the letter of Hebrews, his concern is that some of the people he's writing to, the church he's writing to, probably in Rome, that some of those people don't truly believe. They, they don't have saving faith in Christ, and they have not entered the rest. That's, that, that is his concern. They've not entered the Sabbath rest of salvation. And so he quotes Psalm 95. This is the third time he's quoted Psalm 95 in about 15 verses. He likes it. Do not harden your hearts. Believe. And so enter God's rest. What about you? What about me? What about 
Anybody online or hearing this later on? Have you entered that rest? Are you resting in the grace of God? Jesus Christ has done all the work, all the work needed for our salvation for all eternity. There is no work for you to do. No work. So rest in Him. Rest in Him. He has done it all. What is His work? By taking our sin on Himself, by living the perfect righteous life we fall short of, by going to the cross to take that sin away and put it to death, rising again as the first fruits of the new creation. He has done all of that. And then He calls to you. He calls to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Amen. If you have questions about this, I'm not sure if, if have I entered the rest, am I, my faith genuine, I have doubts, I don't know, what, what, would you please talk to me. Or talk to Kevin or talk to, to one of our other leaders because, you know, I share the concern of the writer to the letter of the Hebrews here. His concern that there, there's people who don't know this saving faith and don't have, have not entered this rest. And my prayer, my desire, my heart is everybody of our St. John's community, church, school, Mission de Jesus, everybody our lives touch enters that rest through faith in Christ. But there's more. We go on, verse 9, or 8. Is it 8 or 9? Yeah, 9, 8. Yeah. For if Joshua had given them rest, okay, now he's talking about the promised land. He's going back to that. If Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day, because Psalm 95 was later on. He said, hey, there's still a Sabbath rest coming. There remains, he says, then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works. That's what we've been talking about. Just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest. So that no one will perish by following their, the Israelites, their example of disobedience. Now there's a little bit of irony here. You know, it's like word of that. Make every effort to enter that rest. In other words, work hard to rest. Now, now. now what he's meaning here is, is make this a priority. This is important. Make it a priority. So, so, okay, what's he talking about? Another Sabbath rest? There's one yet that remains for the people of God? So here's the deal. There's, there's a, like a, a two-layer. There's a now, not yet to this Sabbath rest. Sabbath rest ultimately points to the ultimate rest, which we have in the new creation, in the resurrection, in the eternal life, which we enjoy in the presence of God forever. That's, that's ultimately Sabbath rest. You see, God created Genesis 1 at the end of the six days of creation, the first creation. God rests, creates a Sabbath at the end of God's work of restoring that creation, which is the day of resurrection when Christ returns. Sabbath rest in the new creation. That's, it's so important. That's why he created Sabbath. Remind us and put us before us. Sabbath rest pictures the complete fulfillment of salvation. This is the, the now and the not yet that we've talked about regarding salvation. Now I have salvation through faith in Christ, then on that day I will have the complete fulfillment in the resurrection. Now I have the forgiveness of sins. Then there will be no sin, and I will have no sin nature, and I'll never sin again. Now we have the presence of Jesus in his word and sacrament. Then we shall see him face to face. Now we have rest in Christ by grace through faith. Then we enter the eternal Sabbath rest in the presence of God. 
That's what we look forward to. So, okay, so what? What does this mean for us now? What does it mean then in light of this to keep the Sabbath? Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Now, on the one hand, I've got to point out this, we do not need, we are not bound by the Old Testament strictures regarding Sabbath. Those were all pictures, signposts pointing to Jesus fulfilled in him. They are fulfilled. So, it was, you know, the seventh day, and you can't work on for 24 hours that day. That doesn't apply to us. That was a picture. It is fulfilled in Christ. But still, we are to keep the Sabbath. But as New Testament people, what does that mean? How do we do that? Well, let's look at it in terms of, of what the Sabbath is really about. By creating the Sabbath, God is emphasizing two things as being really, really important. And one of them is this. Rest is important. That's why he's using this image. Rest is important. It's not laziness. It's important. It's important for our health. It's important for our relationships. It's important for our mental health. We don't get adequate rest and sleep. We break. He worked into the very design of our bodies. Rest is important. That's one. And the other is this. What it points to, the ultimate meaning of Sabbath, is important. Salvation, eternal life, Christ Jesus. He is our rest. That's important. So keeping the, the Sabbath has to do with valuing these two things and making them part of our lives. Not tied to, a, to one day a week, but woven into the fabric of every day. Sabbath, rest, and Jesus. Okay, so then what does it mean? Keeping the Sabbath. I see two aspects of keeping the Sabbath. One is valuing rest, getting rest. Valuing rest. Uh, and, and it's like saying, hearing in this Sabbath command, God saying, this is important. Stop making an idol out of work and productivity and busyness. Stop boasting about how busy you are. Stop thinking that getting adequate rest is laziness. Stop thinking that a mark of good parenting is the schedule is totally full with kids' activities. <clears throat> Start thinking that it actually honors God to get the rest we need for our bodies, for our relationships, for our minds, for our emotions, for our souls. Yeah. That's keeping the Sabbath. And the other is feeding our faith and leading us to Jesus. Sabbath rest is a picture of salvation in Christ and ultimately what he has provided for us in the new creation and forgiveness. So keeping the Sabbath is then valuing and making use and weaving into our lives those things that point us to Christ and lead us to receive the rest we have in him. Top of the list is worship. Where we stop our work and meditate on God's work and let him work on us. Giving us his gifts through word, through sacrament, as we pray, as we praise. But that's not the only way. Keeping the Sabbath is any time we're spending time in the Word or meditating on the Word or time in prayer, time in a devotion, in a small group, in a Bible study, listening to Christian music throughout the day, uh, meditating on Christian art. Anything where we're putting Jesus and, and His rest and reminding ourselves and taking our rest in Him is keeping the Sabbath. It's keeping the Sabbath. So are you keeping the Sabbath? Are you keeping the Sabbath? Are you resting as God has commanded? Are we making use, keeping and feeding the faith God intends through worship, word, prayer, devotion? Is God calling you to make any changes? Is He calling me to make any changes? We have been blessed so mightily through God's work and he invites us and calls us to rest in him, to rest in him. So may he be at work in each of us, leading us to Sabbath rest, resting 
as he calls us and being led to Jesus, our rest. Until that day when we enter that eternal rest of the new creation. Let's pray. Dear Lord, it is, it is uh, to take something that is good work and make it an idol. It's so easy, Lord, to think that our lives are a product of how much we produce, how much we get done, how busy we fill our schedules. Lord, help us to find our identity, our value, our worth in you. As we sang in that first song, Cornerstone, building on nothing but you. Let your spirit lead us, Lord, into keeping the Sabbath. We may get the rest that you designed our bodies and our minds to need, but also that we are making use of the ways you have given us as New Testament people to receive the rest that we have in you. In Jesus' name, amen.